Subarachnoid hemorrhage is frequently evident in patients after head trauma, but we need to consider its presence carefully since in some cases, subarachnoid hemorrhage contributes to the traumatic event rather than its consequence. A reasonable approach is to consider the extent of the hemorrhage and how it corresponds with the magnitude of trauma based on the history and other signs of head trauma, such as scalp swelling or fractures. Traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage is frequently limited to a few sulci over the convexities of the brain, as in this example of a patient who struck his head on a concrete floor after a fall. But the pattern of hemorrhage alone is not sufficient to predict its cause. The nature of the traumatic injury is an important predictive factor as well. For example, subarachnoid hemorrhage on the scan of a pedestrian who was struck by a car while crossing the street is most likely traumatic. But diffuse subarachnoid hemorrhage in a 50-year-old patient found unconscious after an unwitnessed minor car crash should lead you to consider that the hemorrhage was secondary to an underlying ruptured aneurysm. This patient was noted to have subarachnoid hemorrhage on CT after a motor vehicle collision. But because of poor history regarding the nature of the accident, this patient had CT angiography with volume reconstructions because there was concern for a vascular cause of the hemorrhage since the patient had no evidence of head trauma. The CTA was negative and no further imaging was recommended. This 45-year-old woman was found unconscious off the road in a car that had hit a tree but the event was unwitnessed. She had no memory of the accident, which is common. Her CT demonstrated diffuse subarachnoid hemorrhage and an incidental colloid cyst. Based on the extent of hemorrhage on her CT scan, vascular imaging was obtained. Her digital subtraction angiogram demonstrated an anterior communicating artery aneurysm, so her subarachnoid hemorrhage was from a ruptured aneurysm that was most likely the cause of the accident as well. CT imaging of this patient after a car accident revealed subarachnoid hemorrhage, but there was also a typical traumatic hemorrhage in the splenium of the corpus callosum, left frontal lobe, along with scattered subarachnoid hemorrhage, seen here in the cortical sulci. In a case like this, unless there's compelling clinical history to the contrary, the imaging is entirely consistent with subarachnoid hemorrhage secondary to trauma. Even when you see uncommon patterns of hemorrhage, as in this case where the subarachnoid hemorrhage filled the basilar cisterns but is accompanied by a parenchymal hemorrhage, you cannot conclude that the hemorrhage is not due to a ruptured aneurysm. This case also demonstrates another finding associated with aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage. Notice that the temporal horns are dilated. This is a sign of communicating hydrocephalus that is not commonly accounted with subarachnoid hemorrhage when it's the result of trauma. A few times in a career, you'll see cases like this one, where there was rupture of a pseudoaneurysm that resulted from an injury to the arterial wall from trauma. A pseudoaneurysm differs from a typical aneurysm since it has fewer layers in its wall. This patient was found unconscious in her car after it had gone off the road at night at high velocity. Her CT had an unusual pattern of subarachnoid hemorrhage that was seen in the pericolosal cistern rather than within the corpus callosum itself. A CT angiogram was ordered while the patient was still in the emergency room. Sagittal reconstructions of that CTA revealed a small aneurysm of the anterior cerebral artery that was confirmed on digital subtraction angiography. The change in its appearance between the CTA and the DSA that followed suggests there was enlargement of this pseudoaneurysm. This particular injury of the anterior cerebral artery has been reported after trauma and is thought to be the result of an injury to the pericolosal as a result of its contact with the falks during the trauma. This other patient had a penetrating injury to the skull that resulted in a parenchymal hemorrhage and diffuse subarachnoid hemorrhage that filled the supracellar cistern and interpeduncular cisterns. A digital subtraction angiogram in this case revealed that the cause of the subarachnoid hemorrhage was a middle cerebral artery pseudoaneurysm that was the result of trauma, but in this case, the penetrating injury. The point of these last two unusual cases is to illustrate that subarachnoid hemorrhage in a patient after trauma is not always an either-or question of trauma versus ruptured aneurysm. Rarely the subarachnoid hemorrhage is from a ruptured pseudoaneurysm that formed at the time of the trauma.
So when you see subarachnoid hemorrhage in a patient after head trauma, put on your Sherlock Holmes hat and consider the case in the context of the magnitude of the trauma, the circumstances of the trauma, and the pattern of bleeding. In the ER, CT angiography is a valuable, non-invasive test that can help establish the diagnosis in most cases when uncertainty regarding the cause of the subarachnoid hemorrhage persists. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.